I've been using my M4 Pro Mac Mini for around about three months now, every day for quite a few hours a day. And I've got a fair bit to say about it. There was one change I had to make to the way that I worked that surprisingly wasn't as big of an issue as I would expected it to be. And also, is it as good a value as everyone would have you believe? Hi, my name's David, this is The Talking Tech, and here we talk about Apple intelligently. Now, although I've been using my M4 Pro Mac Mini for the past three months, I know many of you are still hesitating. From all the comments I get in these videos, I know many of you have still got your M4 Pro Mac Mini or your Mac Mini sitting there in a basket waiting to check out, but you're not quite certain yet that it's the Mac for you. And I totally get it. It's a big investment. You could be buying this Mac Mini to last you for the next three, five, 10 years. So you've got to be certain that it's going to be able to cut the mustard. It's got to be able to be up to the task of working every day for a lot of hours each day and delivering on all of your workflow and the tasks you're going to put in front of it. And hopefully in this video, I'll let you into seeing what it's like working on a Mac Mini and help you decide if it really is for you. There was one thing I just wanted to clear up, and that is to do with the power button. You may have noticed out of all the videos that I've made about the M4 Pro Mac Mini or the Mac Minis, I've never mentioned a power button. Do you remember when they were first launched? There was a load of clickbait videos and tweets about how the power button was in the wrong position. Look, I think we're in a pretty purple patch for Macs right now. Macs and iPads. Leave the iPhone to one side, that's another debate. But for Macs and iPads, I think we are living in a golden era. There's a Mac for virtually everybody at every price point. And the problem is, when things are this good, somebody out there is going to find something to moan about, anything to try and hang a coat on to moan about. And in this instance, it was the power button. But here's my take on it. In the three months that I've had it, other than when I have to close it down to take thumbnail shots for these videos or to show you on these videos, the odd times I take it home to work on, because of course it can be very, very portable as well. Or, and there was one time over Christmas when I shut everything down in here for a bit of a spring clean. Those are the only times I've ever shut the M4 Pro Mac Mini down. And don't forget the heritage of these Mac Minis, they were often used as servers. They're used to being not turned off. This is a full-blown desktop Mac, so it hardly ever needs to be powered off. So how can the power button be in the wrong position when you don't ever use it? Right, that's my venting on that done. Let's begin looking at this M4 Pro Mac Mini and what it's like to work with. Until I started to use the M4 Pro Mac Mini, my daily machine had been an M1 Max MacBook Pro, and that in itself was a big departure for me. It all came about through COVID when I decided that I wanted a bit more flexibility in how I was working. And until that point, I'd always used an iMac. I'd always used a desktop. I was on a 2015, 27-inch iMac. Loved it to pieces, but as I say, I wanted more flexibility. So when that arrived, I knew from day one, as good as the display was on that M1 Max MacBook Pro, that I was going to need a second display. So I bought the studio display. So every day I've used that MacBook Pro, it has been hooked up to the studio display, which meant, of course, I had two displays. Now, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I was worried that I was going to have to get used to a new way of working with the Mac Mini. I decided with the Mac Mini, part of its charm was that I could have the cleanest desk space that I'd ever had, and I was going to work on a single display. And I was worried that that was going to cause me a problem, but it actually hasn't. If anything, I'm more efficient with the way that I work. There are very odd occasions that I might need a second display, and I've got options there, of course. I can put the M1 Max MacBook Pro back on the desk, or of course, which I often do now, is use Sidecar on my 13-inch M4 iPad Pro. So if I really do need a second display, I've got options. But on the whole, I tend to find that a single display is working just fine for me. And as I said, if anything, there's less distractions and are more focused. As we're now getting into the details of what it's like to work on my M4 Pro Mac Mini and helping you decide if this is going to be a Mac for you, Let's just go through the specs that I decided to go for when I was buying this particular Mac Mini. Now, I did buy two at the time. I bought a standard base level Mac Mini, which I've returned, and it was the only time that I've ever used the 14-day return window with Apple. Generally, everything I buy, I keep, but I did return that, but I decided to keep this really well specced M4 Pro Mac Mini. Now, I went for the upgraded chip, which means I've got a 14-core CPU and a 20-core GPU. It was a 200-pound upgrade, but I figured it was probably going to be money well spent. This Mac was going to be the Mac that I was going to use every day. It was going to run this channel. It was going to run my businesses. So I figured that was money well spent. Now, when it comes to checking out on the M4 Pro Mac Minis, we've got three tiers of memory. And I went for the mid-tier. I went for 48 gigs of memory. I did think about going 64 because, of course, I'm this massive professional. I need the best, right? But equally, I've got experience on Apple Silicon. I've used M1. I've used M2. I've used M3. And I know how efficient Apple is to using Apple Silicon. And I figured that the 48 gigs of RAM would probably be enough for me. And you know what? I think I've been proven right. So far, I'm really happy with the choices that I made. 
One of the choices I decided to make, kind of future-proofing myself, is I think there's a very good chance before the year's out that I might be switching to working on a NAS drive here in the studio. So for the extra £100, I decided to go with a 10 gig Ethernet connection. It's not being used yet, but in time it might well be used on a NAS drive. And the only other option I had to decide on then was the storage. We'll come back to that a little bit later on in more detail, but suffice to say for now that when I was checking out, I bought one terabyte of onboard Apple SSD storage. All of that means that the M4 Pro Mac Mini sitting on my desk cost me £2,300, which is a lot of money, but don't forget it's the Mac I use every day to run this channel and my business. So I kind of figured it's worth investing in that. Yes, I was concerned that I was going down from an M1 Max chip to an M4 Pro chip, but I also knew that Apple Silicon is moving so fast, I didn't think that would be an issue. Within a few days of using the M4 Pro Mac Mini, I knew it was gonna be the Mac for me. I knew it was gonna become my daily Mac. So I decided to treat myself to a new Magic Keyboard, mouse and trackpad, the USB-C one. That now means that everything on my main production desk is USB-C, it's one less cable. And part of the charm of the Mac Mini is that it's a clean working environment so I can get rid of the lightning cable on my main production desk. But mouse has actually been glitchy. I don't know why, Now, it only came to light really after my 14 day grace period, so I'm kind of stuck with it now, but I can be right clicking to copy or paste, or I want to drag a file, and the file just seems to stay attached to the cursor. There's nothing I can do about it. I now have worked out the way to, uh, that I get around it is to use the trackpad. I can then drag and drop that file as I wish, and I have to reboot the mouse. There is a problem there, I don't know if you've had it, but that is the only issues I've had so far. Sequoia has been great and the Mac OS on here is working really fine. There was a very short period of time that I found that AirDrop and iPhone mirroring weren't working. But other than that, it's been really solid. I've had no issues at all with the Mac itself. You know what? I think I got the specs on this Mac just about right. I really do. For the first time ever, I think I've got the specs tailored to what I need. Now, my day varies. It can start off doing not such intensive tasks, such as writing, replying to emails, replying to comments on these videos, getting in touch with sponsors, general kind of admin work. But then later in the day, I can spend a long time Final Cut Pro. And those timelines can get pretty chunky as well. They can be using 4K video footage, ProRes log off of the iPhone 16 Pro Max, transitions, titles, pretty chunky files. It handles it fine. Multi-layered documents in Photoshop. I spend a lot of time in Lightroom as well. And honestly, this thing has never complained. So that 48 gigs of memory that I got seems to be right for the tasks that I need to perform on my Mac. I'm not saying I've got the most complicated or high-end workflow out there, but I think from time to time, I do push my Macs. And I'm sure you'll know what I mean, that you kind of get a feeling of if your Mac's quick. Everything about this M4 silicon, both that I use on the iPad and on this M4 Pro Mac Mini, just feels super snappy. The way that apps open up, everything is just so sharp, so tactile. It's a massive step forward. And as I say, I did have concerns that I was trading down from a Mac chip to a Pro chip, but equally, all of the data, all of the information we were hearing before they came out were suggesting that this M4 Apple Silicon was gonna be special, and it really, really is. Now, from time to time, I will check on the activity monitor to see how things are getting on. I've never seen memory swapping going on, and it never seems to get that hot it, I've never heard the fan come on, and I say, I do a lot of video editing on it as well. And that brings me to another question that I wanted to run past you is, who will need an M4 Max chip? Yes, I'm guessing there are some high-end movie editors out there that might need it, but most of us aren't in that exalted high-end league. Most of us are doing daily jobbing work like I'm doing. So who's gonna need an M4 Max chip? Who's gonna need a Mac Studio? Presumably we're getting Mac Stu M4 Max Studios later this year. I'd love to get my hands on one to review. I'm sure at some point in the future, because I do review these Macs on the channel, that I will buy another Max chip. But I'll tell you what, I really wouldn't need it. Did I need to swap for my M1 Max MacBook Pro? Probably not. But equally, now I compare it to how quickly things are working on the M4 Max that I'm using. Honestly, the step forward has been really, really huge. And of course, because of a lot of the work that I do is video editing, I wanted to check that I wasn't just shooting myself in the foot by proving I could use the M4 Pro Mac Mini. So I checked on export times, which seems as good a way of checking in my workflow how these Macs are performing. And I, I showed it in a video a while back. But basically, if I was exporting, say, a 12 or 50 minute 4K video out of Final Cut, I was losing about 30 seconds on the M4 Pro Mac Mini over my M1 Max MacBook Pro. That was all. And I don't really ask for anything more taxing on my Macs than when I'm exporting those videos. 
And you know what? Although that's a fraction slower, everything else I do on the Mac is so much quicker that it kind of makes up for that, line, that bit of lost time. And you know what? Here's the staggering thing. I reckon with that base level Mac Mini that I had, I probably could have got away with working on that. That is how good this M4 Apple Silicon is. And if this is the first of my videos you've seen and you're finding it enjoyable and it's giving you value, then you know what you can do to help me? Subscribe. I know you've heard other creators say it before, but honestly, it makes a huge difference to us. It really does. So if you're enjoying the video, subscribe, maybe turn on notifications. And even better, if you want to share it with some of your techie friends, let's just get this channel out there. We're going great guns at the moment. We're growing quickly. And with your help, I know that we can carry on making these weekly videos about everything Apple for month after month after month. So back to the value of these Mac minis. Are they good value? Well, I've got my thoughts on it now. That ticket price of £599 looks really attractive, but don't forget, you're expected to have a monitor, mouse, and keyboard for that money. If you haven't, you've got to put that on top of it as well. And it's only going to get you 256 gigs of storage. Now, the 16 gigs of memory that all Macs start with now because of Apple intelligence, that's fine. That will suit most people for the majority of the work that they're going to do on it. But 256 gigs of storage, particularly if we're going to begin keeping this Mac for, say, three, five, or 10 years, that is going to be skinny. But you can save yourself money. Now, I know I'm a bit like a kid at Christmas at the moment. I've just come across working off external SSDs. I happen to use this Acasis one. It's not a pay-for video. I genuinely do use them. have been using them now for the last three weeks or, or the past month. I've edited all of the videos off of them, and it's not caused an issue. And if anything, it's helped even further with the flexibility of my workflow because now I can take those SSDs home with me and I can carry on editing at home, come back into the studio and carry on. They're flexible and expandable. I love, love working off them. They're every bit as quick as the SSDs inside the Mac. I haven't noticed any issues at all, not even with heating or overheating rather or thermal throttling. So honestly, do yourself a favor, save money, on the storage side of a Mac when you buy it and look at these externals. There's loads of choices out there, but I'm really enjoying working off of them. Now, that brings me back to the point of value. So are they great value for money? No, they're not great value for money, but they're good value for money. I don't think with Apple you expect to get a bargain. That's not what Apple's about. But what you'll get is a Mac that's going to work hard day after day after day. You know you're going to get software support, so at least seven years and they're solid bits of kit. So are they fantastic value for money? No, but are they good value for money? Yes. So a quick health check on my Mac Mini now after three months of use. That three months means that I've pretty much got everything on here that I'm gonna need. And yes, I am very careful about what I put on my Mac, storage and file management. But of that one terabyte that I bought of Apple SSD, I've only used 156 gigs. I've got plenty of headroom. Now, the go-to apps that I always put on my Mac, Adobe Creative Cloud is always gonna be one of the first. And once that's on there, I'll always be installing Photoshop, Lightroom and Audition, Acrobat and InDesign. I'm also a big Dropbox user, but when it comes to Dropbox, I use their Smart Sync feature, which means I've only got stored locally on the Mac the files and folders that I actually need. Outside of that, I have Grammarly installed, I have Ulysses installed, Final Cut Pro, of course, and I've got two other browsers. Although I am a Safari boy through and through, I use Chrome for uploading these videos to YouTube because there's a couple of extensions that are only on Chrome that I find really useful. And I use Edge, believe it or not. Yes, I am one of the few Edge users. And I use that when I'm using Riverside FM to record my podcast on. And that's pretty much all of my apps on there. And the apps on this Mac Mini are account for around about 55, 56 gigs, I think, or maybe 60 gigs of the usage that I've got on that SSD. I have been told that you can store those apps on an external SSD. I've not done it but some of the comments I've had on videos recently have suggested that you can, so that may be something you want to look into to extend even further the life of the SSD that you bought on your Mac. But basically, this thing now has got everything on there that I need, and it's still running super fast, super smoothly, and I honestly couldn't be happier. So my final thoughts on my first three months of using this M4 Pro Mac Mini as my main Mac and as my only Mac, I'm loving it, particularly the desk space. I don't know how you find working, but I find a clean desk space gives me a clean mindset, I'm more creative and I feel I can get more done. I've never had a desk that looks as tidy and as creative as I have now, which is why I don't mind showing it to you guys on the videos because I'm actually really proud of it. But not only is, is it aesthetic, it means I'm getting work done. I've got used to working on a single monitor. I've got used to working with an M4 Pro Mac Mini sitting there almost, almost invisible. It's so small and yet it's so powerful. If you've got an M4 Mac Mini or an M4 Pro Mac Mini sitting in a basket waiting to check out and any of the workflow I've described to you resonates with you, honestly, do yourself a favor. 
try it. Don't forget, you've got Apple's 14-day money-back guarantee if you're not happy with it. But just because it's small, don't let it put you off. This wasn't just a, a change for change's sake. It turned out to be a change for the better. I'm working more flexibly. I'm working more smartly. And I can be more productive and more creative for more hours of the day. And that, for me, is priceless and justifies the money that I spent on this Mac. And I think this Mac is going to last me for a good little while. If you've enjoyed this video about Mac minis, I'm going to leave another video on screen for you right now that I think you might just enjoy.